Virtual bands are an interesting thing. Way before Gorillaz, way before KDA and Hatsune Miku, way before Crazy Frog and Death Clock, even before the Banana Splits and the Archies, there was the Chipmunks. The Chipmunks have been making hit songs since the late 50s. The creator's son took over in the 70s and has been managing the band and the Chipmunk brand till this day. But after all these years, it seems their popularity has noticeably fizzled down and the brand is now up for sale. So what happened with Alvin and the Chipmunks? Hi there, my name is Josh Shu, and it's a new year and I'm ready to make videos again. So I was hit with some Alvin and the Chipmunk nostalgia online the other day by a random screenshot. It reminded me of a VHS tape I had from the 90s where the Chipmunks enter the multiverse or something and they meet the original animations of themselves. As of November 2021, the property of Alvin and the Chipmunks went up for sale for $300 million. It seems that after all these years, the brand has kind of hit a wall. And outside of a cartoon that they started a few years ago, you just haven't been hearing much about them at all. And I'm willing to bet that those old Chipmunk albums aren't selling like they used to either. So what's going on? They had a promising start as the first virtual band in 1958. A singer-songwriter slash actor named David Seville, which was a stage name by the way, his real name was Ross Bagdasarian Sr., he decided to start releasing songs with a quirky twist to them. Another word for these types of songs were novelty songs, something humorous that stands out, something with a, a silly gimmick to it. It's similar to a jingle, except it's only played during special occasions, like holidays like a novelty. So Bag the Syrian, AKA Mr. Seville, decided to record part of the song in his normal voice and have other parts of it in a pitched up version of his voice and made it sound like he was singing along to a tiny background singer or something on his shoulder or something. The first song he did this with, called Witch Doctor, was a very catchy, weird little novelty song, but it was actually number one for three weeks in the Billboard Top 100. In a follow-up song, Mr. Seville revealed the pitched up voice he duets with to be a bird. He didn't really know what kind of animal to give the voice at first, but later he was inspired to create the chipmunk characters by seeing a chipmunk scurry into the street while he was at a national park. The record label he was with, Liberty Records, wanted Bagdasarian to make another hit like Witch Doctor. So he used his chipmunk idea for a Christmas song. Now he thought it would be funny to name his three chipmunk characters after the three record executives. You had Alvin, named after a guy named Al, Simon, named after a guy named Cy, and Theodore, named after a guy named Ted. That Christmas chipmunk song that everybody has heard at some point in their lives was the first song to feature all three of these chipmunk characters. And during December of 1958, Bagdasarian once again had a hit number one song on his hands. A year later, the chipmunks started appearing in comic books, but their earliest incarnations were like regular chipmunks with little clothes on, and they looked possessed. But soon these designs would be replaced with newer, more modern, designs and it would be easier to tell which one was which. Over time, between then and now, you'll be able to see how the chipmunks began to look more and more like actual children with every new design that came out. The first chipmunk cartoon started in 1961 as The Alvin Show. For the first time, it showed the chipmunks in animation, each with their own personality. It was also the first to feature David Seville as a cartoon character. It was one of the few animated shows ever to have a prime time slot on CBS, but the people wasn't feeling it, and it got canceled with one season. Being in black and white during the broadcasting probably didn't help. The final Chipmunk album in this era came out in 1969. However, Mr. Seville, aka Ross Bagdasarian, died of a heart attack just a few years later. After NBC picked up the Alvin cartoon for Saturday morning reruns, new Chipmunk albums started to come out at the start of the 80s, and it featured the voice of Bagdasarian's son, who shares his name. Ross Bagdasarian Jr. had risen up to carry on his father's Chipmunk legacy. The personalities, who they are, and the relationships are timeless, but 
presenting them in a fresh new way is, is what's exciting for us to do. And with him, the Chipmunks took on a more cooler rock and roll type of vibe. They started doing more of those parody cover songs that the Chipmunks are known for. In 1983, a new cartoon started. Now the Chipmunks were to be known as Alvin and the Chipmunks. The show introduced the Chipettes, literally just female versions of Alvin, Simon, and Theodore. And this new dynamic did well for the show, and eventually they would just name it The Chipmunks. The show was almost like an 80s Saturday morning cartoon version of Sing or Glee, in which the characters would sing popular music and wear trendy outfits. while they was just going about their day. The late 80s, early 90s chipmunks were in their peak popularity. They actually had a feature film to release in theaters and TV specials and album sales. It's almost like they were actually celebrities. After changing their production company to Deke, remember Deke? Deke. They also changed up their designs. They look more human than ever at this point and more like Care Bears. The show also changed up its theme to be more like movie parodies. This was the version of Alvin and the Chipmunks that I got introduced to in VHS format a few years later. They did a spoof of Back to the Future that I liked. So after ending their show, they came out with more music, including a fourth Christmas album and a country album. In case you're wondering who listens to this stuff, it's mostly for kids. The Chipmunks made chipmunk variants of well-known songs, making them quirky and kid-friendly. In those days, they were peaking in the kids' version of the top 10 on Billboard. It's, it's funny how I'm talking about the Chipmunks like they're actual people in the entertainment industry, but they kind of were. And that's how virtual bands are. They're the face and voice of a brand, and you'd never actually know who the people behind their voices are unless you actually go out of your way to look them up. You'd think that these animated characters in these bands are getting rich off of album sales. And you gotta remind yourself that they can't use money. They're not real. So in 1996, Universal Studios bought the rights to the Chipmunk characters. Outside of releasing them a greatest hits album, Universal gave Alvin and the Chipmunks two straight-to-video movies. The first one featured the Chipmunks meeting Frankenstein, or actually Frankenstein's monster, in 1999, while the other had them meet the Wolfman. But the movies weren't connected. A really weird choice to all of a sudden pair the Chipmunks with classic Hollywood monsters, but then I guess it would make more sense if you understood Universal Studios. Universal owns these classic monsters, Dracula, the mummy, Swamp Thing, and his amazing friends. And if Universal hadn't have lost the rights to Alvin and the Chipmunks in 2002, they probably would have had Dracula show up to meet the Chipmunks at some point. Universal breached their contract with Bagdasarian Jr. and he sued their ass along with his wife, Janice Carmen. Basically, they didn't like how Universal was treating their characters and felt like they was missing out on royalties. Bagdasarian and his wife considered this to be as serious as a custody battle. The Chipmunks were like their actual children. In 2003, they produced a third direct-to-video movie with their actual daughter. His wife, Janice, does the voices for the Chipettes and Theodore, I believe. It was called Little Alvin and the Mini Monks. This was clearly made for more of a younger audience and it used puppets. Definitely a break from the norm. Now in 2004, Bagdasarian Productions announced their CGI live action movie deal with Fox. It didn't actually go into production until 2007, but the Alvin and the Chipmunks movie was just what the franchise needed. The future of the Chipmunks had been in question since the end of the 90s, and after that straight to video phase kind of fell flat, a movie deal was a great way to give the Chipmunks a soft reboot. Well, they got a writer from The Simpsons to do the screenplay, and back to Sarian and Janice had always played the voices for the Chipmunks, but this time they decided to get some known faces behind the voices for marketing the movie better. They got some affordable actors and singers on board, like uh, they got Jesse McCartney, he was kind of like Bieber of the late 2000s, and Justin Long of Jeepers Creepers fame, and this other guy named Matthew. One thing about these chipmunk voice actors though, uh, if they change the voices later on to make it high-pitched and chipmunky, does it really matter if celebrities are voicing them? Like just get regular voice actors. 
But with all that being said, I think Justin, Jesse, and Matthew were actually a good choice because if you look at them now, it's like they're not regular people, but do you really see them as celebrities? They're kind of in the middle. It's weird. Now, of course, when the chipmunks sang, it was still Bagdasarian and his wife, Janice, because at the end of the day, they are the talent behind the chipmunks. Grossing over $300 million on a budget of only $60 million, the Alvin and the Chipmunks live action was a huge success. Seemed like all the CGI work they did didn't go to waste. One of the main reasons pre-production took three years was because the visual effects team had to make the designs good enough for Bagdasarian Jr.'s liking. Apparently, he was very picky on how they looked. He wanted the chipmunks to look realistic, but not like chipmunks. I guess this kind of explains why the chipmunks looked more and more like humans over time. He doesn't want the chipmunks to actually look like chipmunks. So there was a sequel live action film in 2009 that did even better than the first movie. On a $70 million budget, it made over $400 million back, coming in third opening weekend behind the one and the only Avatar. This movie featured the Chipettes, an element already proven to raise interest in the chipmunk brand as a whole. The voices of the Chipettes were done by Christina Applegate. Yeah, let's give a quick shout out to Christina Applegate. <laughs> Anna Ferris and Amy Poehler. So definitely the squeak will raise the bar a little bit. These movies all came out during the Christmas season, by the way, so it's just something about those kid-friendly holiday movies that really just rake in the dough. So it's no surprise that I got a third film. In 2011, Shipwrecked came out. It did just about as good as the first one did financially, but seems to be everyone's least favorite one. I feel like most people know about these three chipmunk live action movies more than anything else chipmunk related, at least those like me, those outside of the demographic. That's just how big the movies were. It didn't matter if they were actually good. They used nostalgia to get parents trust and the parents got all of their small children to watch it, giving the chipmunks, something that's been around for over 50 years, brand new fans. But I had forgotten there was actually a fourth movie. New, new chipmunks movie. Yay. Uh, the Squeakquel, and then there was Chipwrecked, and now this one is Chipmunks Road Chip, because they go on a road trip. Red Fruit with the Big Afro made a cameo, and so did Retta. And Kaylee Cuoco replaces Amy Poehler as one of the voices, and I'm sure nobody really noticed. But the Golden Raspberry Awards noticed, as Kaylee Cuoco won Worst Supporting Actress the following year. Okay, so the very lucrative live action film phase of the Chipmunks has obviously died down and may finally be over. But the movie soundtracks have won multiple awards, including five Grammys. Where do the Chipmunks go from here? Well, the next stop for Back to Sarian Productions was back to television. Back to Sarian Jr. and his wife are back voicing the Chipmunks in a new CGI TV show that airs on Nickelodeon. In the movies, you can only tell one story. And I'm interested in telling a lot of stories. Apparently, since 2015, off the high of that fourth film, instead of just Alvin and the Chipmunks, they decided to switch it up and name it and the Chipmunks. As a callback to how David Seville, the Chipmunks' adoptive father slash manager, got mad and yelled at Alvin. So this is the Chipmunks' most current design. They have finally reached a full-on animal-human hybrid look. It's kind of weird looking for me, but I'm sure the kids watching Nick these days don't mind. Nothing appears to be wrong with the show. It's not about to be canceled. It is in its fifth season, and it's probably going to go into syndication, which means that it's going to be able to have reruns of it being played for years to come. But yet, as of November 2021, Back to Syrian Productions announced that they are wanting to sell the Chipmunk property for $300 million. That's actually less than the gross box office for the first CGI movie. Why after holding on to this property and keeping it in the family for 60 years would they be trying to sell it? It's the Bagdasarian's children we're talking about here. My theory on this is that Bagdasarian Jr. and his wife, they can't keep doing this forever. Bagdasarian Jr. himself is in his 70s. He's a senior citizen and his kids aren't necessarily planning to carry on his singing chipmunk career like he did. The time has come for the man to retire. And a syndicated TV show along with a music category that continues to get streams till this day is a good way to go out. 
Their Spotify has 2 million monthly listeners, and it's not even their entire discography. The Chipmunks have recorded a chip ton of music. And not to compare this cheesy virtual band to the best band of all time, the Beatles, but the Chipmunks came first by like two years. They had a funny animal name before it was cool. The Chipmunks are like the Beatles for small children. And as the Beatles might have a difficult time getting new fans organically, as the music gets older, the Chipmunks potentially get a new fan every time a baby is born. Like if you're a parent or a babysitter or a teacher and you deal with children a lot, you've definitely played some chipmunks at some point. This explains why the live action movies did so damn well and why they still have millions of streams. The original process of recording chipmunk vocals involved recording the voice at half speed and then playing it back at normal speed to have a higher pitch. Of course, now you can do it digitally. You can just pitch up the voice and give it that chipmunky sound but the actual chipmunk sound has some added personality to it. They make true cover songs. It's not just some high-pitched karaoke attempt. Some people might say the chipmunks are trash and they sound annoying. It's not real music, similar to the stuff people will say about autotune. But when the chipmunks sing, they have real singing voices behind that chipmunk filter. It's literally just a change in the pitch. And it honestly did take some passionate singing talent to pull it off for this long. That being said, I think the voices of the chipmunks, Bagdasarian Jr. and his wife, are gonna be hard to replace. And when they sell the property and go off into the sunset, the chipmunks will never be the same. After this newer chipmunk cartoon ends, which will probably be in the next couple years, it's hard to see what will happen next, if anything. But on a positive note, Alvin and the Chipmunks as a franchise has gone full circle. They've already accomplished just about everything a virtual band could accomplish. They started selling novelty Christmas records. Now they're streaming Christmas music and people are listening to them every year as a tradition, just like they do with Mariah Carey. The Alvin and the Chipmunks cartoon started out as a one season black and white TV show. Now they have a CGI TV show with five seasons that could probably keep going for five more. But who knows if the show will get past season six at this rate. If it does, they'll just have to bring in new voice actors, I guess. What will probably end up happening to the brand is that Viacom will buy them. Viacom, now known as Viacom CBS, is the massive umbrella corporation that owns Nickelodeon, the very network that's streaming and airing the Chipmunk show right now anyway. So what happened with the Chipmunks is that their creator's son, Ross Bagdasarian Jr., completed what his father started and secured their Chipmunk legacy. But the future of the brand is kind of up in the air. Viacom might have plans for them or they might not have plans. They could just let the franchise die or maybe keep the cartoon going and make toys or something. I guess we'll find out. The whole novelty singing chipmunk idea was very niche to begin with, but as the original David Seville proved in the beginning, it's just crazy enough to work. And as his successor proved, it's an idea worth fighting for. And these characters are able to stand the test of time through pop music. All I wanted to do was carry on his legacy of Alvin and the Chipmunks. So uh, my wife and I uh, have continued these last 50 years uh, to bring Alvin and the Chipmunks, whether it's music, television shows, or movies, to uh, all the fans around the world. Alrighty, y'all. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like it if you liked it, and I will see ya.